Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're going to add an emergency brake to Papa Bear, this 1950 Chevy 5.0 pickup truck. This truck, I don't have a lot of history on it. All I know is somebody tried to hot rod it with an LS motor and rear disc brake conversions and whatnot. But they never actually hooked up any parking brakes. Like there's not even cables going back to the rear brakes. So I looked at solutions. I looked at possibly returning it to stock or adding a low car handle. But in the end, when you add up the costs, honestly, if you're starting from nothing, an e-stop might be the most economical solution. So let me show you what that is. I said most economical, these are not cheap. Um, you can cobble something together from the junkyard for much cheaper, but if you're putting in low car stuff, like low car handles and then and hardware, then yeah, this, this is in the, that range, basically. What you have in the box is basically an actuator and a controller with a, a very loud and annoying speaker. This goes into a bracket, which I have separately for some instructions. Um, not much to it hookup wise. This brown and blue goes to this black and red. This black and red goes to your power and you're ready to go. You can also hook it up to a parking light and a safety switch, both of which are kind of optional. And some you get stickers, you know, there's stickers. Okay, that's the actuator part of the system. So if you have a functioning e-brake system, this would just go in place of where your, the one from your pedal or your handle goes. In order for this to work, you do need a bracket. Long and the short of it, this bracket goes through. You take this nut off, obviously, tighten it down over there. This goes through here and your existing cables it's either way really will go through and pull that way so it'll pull it this will pull this way on your two existing cables I don't have existing cables as I mentioned so I bought this universal cable kit and I'm gonna get it installed on the truck today I'm just waiting for a caliper but while I wait for the caliper I can mount this there's no mounting hardware included with this e-stop unfortunately Oh, also, the, um, this kit that I got from Speedway with the universal cables, it comes with a bag of parts, but zero instructions. There's no instructions with this. And they're cut to length. You're supposed to cut these to length, but... Um, yeah, it would have been nice to have some instructions. This is the battery box on the Chevy. You basically want a long section of frame if you can find it. Okay, so that can mount there, no problem. Put these rivets in the way over here. I, mean, I could definitely make that work. Welcome to Operation Overkill. I went ahead and fabricated a plate to mount this to. So it's got four holes for the actuator, four holes for the bracket. I'm just gonna drill these out and tap them and then I put uh, little tabs with weld nuts on the back so I can just plop it into the frame rail, drill underneath, Bob's your uncle. For a quarter 20 tap, you want a, a, a 1364 drill bit. Oh, that's a bad start. That's a pretty good drill bit. Owl tools, China.
This part always makes me pucker a little bit because if you're gonna break a tap, oh yeah, I broke that one already. If you're gonna break a tap, it's gonna be on the, it's not gonna be on the first hole, it's gonna be on the last hole. We've already invested all this time, but we'll try it. All right, I'm not gonna make you watch me tap these, but I will tune back in if, uh, if disaster happens. Okay, I lied, you can watch me tap one hole. This is the last hole. Let's see if I get lucky. Now, there's a lot of reviews on Amazon about this tap being brittle and breaking. So I'm like only doing like a 16th of a turn before I take the pressure off. Being very gingerly. And we're through. I'll bring you back for assembly. We assemble. Loctite. All right, that looks, that looks pretty professional. If I may say so myself. My 5 16th game is super weak right now. So I'm gonna replace these with uh, some better nut bolts, but right now we're just gonna mount it up and then I can re replace those one at a time on the car. Let's go. All right, nice. All right, as I said, I will replace this with better hardware for now with like lock washers and stuff but for now I'd say that looks pretty darn good focus focus here right here hello it looks pretty darn good so I am happy with that and yeah I finally found a caliper it ended up being a 1980 Buick Riviera caliper so theoretically, the spring needs to come off so I can get this nut into that hole. But for now, let's not do that. Measure for length, take it apart. The reason why is because you gotta, I mean, you don't have to do this if you wanna be super careful about cutting the sheathing, but it's way safer to just pull this cable back out of the way, cut the sheathing and then pull the cable through is my thinking. Hi. Hey. Move my car. Move my car. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. You Wait, you're gonna hit my Bronco? We're putting, we put the car in five so we can do the inside inside. Okay, all right, I will move the Bronco. It's, don't you know where your home is? <laughs> Let's get it up in there. Route it out, let me get my hardware. Okay, so I think this side I wanna take over. There's a horrendous cross member here. I think I'm gonna do go over that because it'll keep everything off of the drive shaft and out of the way of the suspension, which is paramount and the exhaust. It doesn't currently exist. It goes here, and we are basically there. And just remember to leave enough slack to accommodate um, suspension droop. And this is the spot. Of course, I didn't bring anything to mark these with. Real smart, man. So I'm just gonna put a tape where I need to cut it. I know it's in shadow, I'm sorry. My lighting crew, I gave them the day off again. It's a very well taken care of lighting crew. My green tape's where I'm gonna cut it. So let me pull the cable out, cut them, put the ferrules on, and go. There's like a steel cable or something in here. All right, I pulled the spring out to make this whole thing a little easier.
put the spring back on. Without poking my eye out, that's the goal. Anyway. What? No. Yeah, but what's up? The vacuum is full, huh? Okay, give me a second. Okay, ow. All right. Now, take this through here. Along there. You know what? There's actually like a natural spot for this to come through the frame rail. Let me take them both through there. I don't know if it's going to work for this one though. No, the bottom's got to go not through it, but this one. That looks like a 9 16th to me though. Indeed. So now I'm going to route the um, cable through here and kind of cut it to, I'm going to give myself some slack. There's no harm in having it be longer, really. The, the key is when you want to cut a steel cable like this, you solder the area you want to cut and then cut right through the middle of your solder with a cutoff wheel and that way it doesn't fray. Yeah, I'll cut it to like right here. So I'll solder it here, cut, and then we'll be good to go. All right, the solder absolutely did not work. So I'm gonna try a technique I saw on the internet. I'm trying it well ahead of where I need it. You basically put it in a drill. Oh no, that doesn't look right. Put it in a drill, put it under tension, and take the map gas to it. Let's see if this works. pretty good. I did that well ahead of where I needed it because I wouldn't know if it would work or not, but that works pretty good. I used that very cool technique to get both of them uh, in. So now I'm going to get this piece on. Basically goes through the ferrule. Okay, and then rotate it. And it won't go through there. Get this onto here somehow. There you go. Let those about even, which they are. And then get the nut on. All right, below the camera here, I've got a temporary hookup with a car battery. But you are going to keep your eye up here. Well, I push the button and see if I get anything here. Oh, that's loud. Oh, yeah. How far does it go? Wow, they weren't kidding when they said that that alarm is loud. Let me put some sound deadener on that and see if it helps. All right, we're gonna try it one more time with some boom mat over the speaker. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap that in boom, double wrap it in boom mat. Well, that was a successful installation of the E-Stop emergency brake kit. Now Papa Bear can be safely parked up at home. My parents live on a big hill, so that gives me some peace of mind knowing that works. Um, so we did the hip replacement with the four link, we did the fuel tank, and we did the e-stop. And you might be saying, well, Matt, that's it, you're done. Right, you're done. You said those are the three things you said you were gonna do. And then some of you might be going, why is there a welding blanket on the engine? And why is there a giant hole in the firewall? Well. I can't give this over to my dad with the way this thing was steering and braking. So 
The other two things I'm going to do on this thing are a conversion to move the brake booster and master cylinder up to the firewall. A couple reasons for that. One is it makes it so much easier to service. I mean, it used to be under the driver floor, you have to like pull up the carpet and open up a hole plug just to check and fill your master cylinder. Nightmare. Two is the brake pedal location on this thing was way off and having it hung here, I can put it exactly where I want it, basically. So uh, yeah, i am just got this mocked up. That'll be all up in the next episode and I'm redoing the steering. So you'll see that next time on Matt's Garage. Mm -hmm.